Before you leave home, please make a note of any medication you are taking and bring with you any glasses or contact lenses you may use. When you first arrive at Moorfields Eye Hospital, you should go to the clinic indicated in the appointment letter sent you by the hospital. Go to reception, just inside the main entrance at the junction of City Road and Caton Street, and they will direct you to the clinic. There are detailed location maps and travel details for the hospital in the Help and Contacts section of this DVD. All clinics are colour-coded and clearly signposted. Make yourself known to the clinic receptionist and they will book you in. When you are called through into the clinic, you will be seen by either a specialist nurse or doctor. Initially, when patients are called into the clinical area, we first introduce ourselves and just explain what is going to happen and the tests that are going to be performed. There are initially three tests that you will be asked to undertake. The visual acuity test involves covering each eye in turn and reading letters from a chart from the largest to the smallest. The smaller the letters you can read, the better your vision is. This test helps your consultant understand if there is a problem with your vision. Undetected or untreated problems may lead to permanent damage. The Ishihara or color vision test shows how well your optic nerve is functioning and gives an indication of whether there is any compression on the optic nerve. You will be asked to read numbers made up of coloured dots on a card. If you use them, you may be asked to use glasses or contact lenses during these tests. The intraocular pressure test checks whether there is crowding at the optic disc or at the apex of your optic nerve. Drops are administered by the doctor or nurse to both numb the eyes and temporarily stain the cornea. A tonometer is then used to measure the pressure inside your eyes in different positions. This is done because pressure can increase greatly on the optic nerve if swelling or constriction around the eye applies pressure on it when you look around. In thyroid eye disease specifically, the optic nerve may be compromised because of compression. Whenever there is compression, the optic nerve might become swollen, it might become ischemic or there might be a lack of oxygen and blood supply to the optic nerve, which decreases the visual output, decreases the patient color vision and makes it extremely difficult for patients to carry on their daily life as they did in the past. Why these tests are so important is, is because it's a direct indication to the doctor as to what's going on with the nerve. The doctor may also send you to medical imaging, where photographs of your eyes can be taken for future reference. As well as collating these photographs and the results of your tests, the doctor or nurse will also make notes about any family history of illness. Now, history taking is important because the questions that are asked directly relate to the patient condition. Why is it that they've decided to come forward now? Where's the pain located? If it is pain, how bad is that pain? Is it radiating to other areas? In, in order to get the extent and severity as well as the duration of the pain the patient is experiencing. Now, we find out the pa what's happened in the past, what's the patient's previous ophthalmic conditions, their family history, about their general health, whether or not they've had previous surgeries, what medications they're on, any allergies, as well as their social history. All these questions are important because it helps to aid a diagnosis and help the physician to decide on the best course of treatment for a particular patient. These initial notes and tests are referred to by your medical team throughout your treatment, so the progress of the disease and the effectiveness of treatment can be gauged. Along with clinical examination and your family medical history, these tests form the basis upon which your diagnosis is made. The diagnosis of thyroid eye disease can sometimes be quite difficult, especially when it's in its mild form, where it can be uh, persistent red eyes um, and injected eyes with a little bit of pain, and that can be uh, 
misdiagnosed as conjunctivitis, which is the most common cause of, of red eyes. And there are patients who can have these problems for months uh, before somebody realizes this isn't just straightforward red eyes due to dry eyes or conjunctivitis. So it can be difficult to diagnose in the uh, mild form. But to be fair, if you have that kind of disease, you tend not to need any aggressive treatment. But there are some patients who have a little bit worse disease than this and they have some eye movement problems which we would normally treat. And these patients don't always get the diagnosis of thyroid eye disease and it is these patients that we would like to see earlier um, uh, so that we can treat them and give them a better outcome. But when it's classical thyroid eye disease it tends to be easier because the eye is very swollen then they will get referred to an eye specialist and then the diagnosis will be made that they have eye movement problems and they will usually have a scan uh, a CT scan, uh, sometimes an MRI, and that will show that the muscles are big or the fat is big. But then having said that, even then you can't be sure that it's thyroid eye disease because there are some patients who have a normal thyroid function test and whose eyes are a bit swollen and the muscles are slightly swollen. And there are other groups of diseases, something called myositis, where you just get inflammation of the muscles, that looks like thyroid eye disease. So I would say in most cases it's fairly easy to diagnose, but in some cases it can be quite difficult and in very rare cases you have to actually also do a biopsy of the muscle to show it's not um, something else. Well the symptoms vary according to the severity of the condition. Um, patients with mild thyroid eye disease may just complain that the eyes feel dry and a bit tired and especially if they're working on computers they tend to, to dry out a lot then. Some people will say that when they wake up in the morning the eyes are a little bit crusted and they they f f find that the eyes are difficult to open in the mornings and those are all symptoms of dryness and if the um, uh, treatment is followed with uh, artificial tears then those symptoms can be removed. Um, some uh, patients notice that, that their eyes look different when they look in the mirror and this, this is a really big problem because uh, self-image is um, very important and if a pa patient looks in the mirror and sees someone that they don't really recognise then this can have a profound effect on their well-being and also um, if there's a change in the uh, eyes in, in terms of becoming more prominent or perhaps the eyelids are very wide open and there's a staring appearance then other people may react to the patient adversely uh, and think that, that the patients are, are, are angry when, when they're not really, it's just that the thyroid eye disease has affected them in that way. I would stress again that there is no one specific diagnostic test for thyroid eye disease and it would make our life and that of the patients a lot easier if there was. But in general we do tend to run all the standard blood tests, that would be a full blood count checking for the electrolytes in the bloodstream because of course if we're intending on starting any systemic treatment we need to know what their background biochemical profile look like, looks like. And so we would perform of course thyroid function tests and in those individuals where the thyroid appeared to be behaving adequately or normally we would also run some very specific immunological tests that look for very early antibodies against the thyroid gland and that can actually be very helpful in some individuals. So we would run those tests, that's a, a, a hormone profile for the thyroid gland a routine thyroid function tests, as I say, we would run a full blood count, urea and electrolytes, and then we would go on and consider uh, undertaking a CT scan of the orbits, but not every patient requires that. After your initial diagnosis, if your condition is stable and should improve without intervention or can be treated with just lubricant drops, you will be discharged with the appropriate prescription to take to the pharmacy. But if your condition deteriorates, you should contact your clinic immediately for a new appointment. If your condition is more serious, you will be asked to return for a further appointment where more specialised tests can be arranged. As has been mentioned, this might include a CT scan, also known as a computerised tomography or CAT scan. This can give a detailed view inside the eye sockets and assist in any decision about your treatment. Another test is for visual fields. A technician will supervise this test where you will sit in front of a screen and be asked to press a button each time you see a flashing light. The test will show if you have any blind spots which might indicate vision loss. The test is repeated for both eyes and takes about 20 minutes. 
The results can indicate where thyroid eye disease is affecting your optic nerve. You may also be sent to the orthoptics department, where detailed tests can be made on the muscles that move your eyes. Any double vision that you may be experiencing can be evaluated and, if you wear glasses, a temporary Fresnel prism, a sticky plastic sheet, can be attached to one of your lenses to help remove the double vision until surgery. All these tests enable your consultant to then evaluate the condition of your thyroid eye disease and discuss with you your treatment options. And I think that will help you and you look better. When a course of treatment has been agreed with you, an appointment will then be made with the relevant consultant or specialist. The thyroid disease patients fall under various headings and they're looked after by effectively all the oculoplastic, surgical and adnexal service uh, consultants. So they might go to a variety of different consultants depending on uh, which specific element of thyroid eye disease is their main complaint.